Hello everyone, let us provide a solution to this problem and we are going to solve this fully, meaning that we should bring out all the possible solutions. Now we have 3x to the power of 4 equals 3. I can divide both sides by 3. Okay, now 3 will go and then x to the power of 4. x to the power of 4 is going to be equal to 1, right? Now, ordinarily, I could have told you to take the fourth root of both sides, right? But if you do that, you will not have complete solutions. So, x to the power of 4 here will be equal to 1 to the power of 4. Now, take this to the left. So that x to the power of 4 minus 1 to the power of 4 will be equal to 0. Now, look at the way I'm going to break this down into two. And before I'm breaking it down, I already had something. I have something in mind, okay? So, x squared squared minus 1 squared squared equals 0. This is because if you have brackets separating two powers, you can always multiply the powers. So, it will give you x squared. If you do the same thing here, you will still have um, 1 to the power 4. I mean, x to the power 4, right? Now, now we can apply difference of two squares. Because if you have a squared minus b squared, now it is the same thing as a plus b multiplying a minus b. This is what we have. And I will apply the same principle here right now. Because we have x squared squared minus 1 squared squared. So my a now will be x squared and my b will be 1 squared, right? So in place of a plus b, I'll have x squared plus 1 squared. Close this. Then in place of a minus b, we have x squared minus um, 1 squared. And then this will be equal to 0. I hope you understand this. If you're following, please subscribe to my channel for more of this. Now, from here, we can apply zero product rule. Zero product rule. And that says that if you have two factors like this to multiply, one of them must be equal to zero for you to have zero here. And which one is zero, we do not know. So we have to equate either of them to zero. So we're going to say that x squared plus one squared is equal to zero or x squared minus one squared is equal to zero. Okay, so now from here, let's continue. This means that x squared plus one is equal to zero because 1 squared will still give 0, right? Or on this side, okay, I don't want to use difference of 2 squares again. So from this side, we have that um, x squared minus 1 is equal to 0 because 1 squared will give 1, right? Now, what do I do? Make x squared a subject. So x squared from here will be equal to 0 minus 1. Or on this side, x squared is going to be equal to 0 plus 1. And then if we continue, then our x squared will be equal to minus 1. Or our x squared will be equal to 1. Now, we are looking for the value of x, not x squared, right? So what do I do? Let's continue. Okay, so from here, I can take the square root of both sides. Square root of x squared equal to positive or negative square root of minus 1. Or on this side, take the square root of x squared, which will be equal to plus or minus square root of 1. Right? So that from here, the square will cancel the square root. And then we have x, which will be equal to positive or negative square root of negative 1. 
And on that side, this will cancel as well, and then x will be equal to positive or negative square root of 1. Then, from here, do you know that this means that x is equal to positive or negative square root of 1 multiplied by square root of negative 1? Because if you multiply 1 times negative 1, you will have negative um, 1 as well. Okay, or on this side, our x is equal to plus or minus 1 because square root of 1 is 1. And I still want us to continue. From here, our x is equal to plus or minus. We need to get the square root of 1, which will give 1. And then the square root of negative 1, which will give i. Okay? So that means we're having 1 times i, right? Okay. Now, in fact, let me leave this one out first. So this means that our x is equal to plus or minus i. Because 1 times i is i. And then this also means that x is equal to i or x is equal to negative i. So we are going to call this our x1 and call this our x2. Now let's go to x3 and 4 and I'll pick that from here. Remember we are having um, x to be equal to plus or minus 1, right? So that's from, let me confirm that, x to be equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, so from here now we have x to be equal to 1 and then x to be equal to minus 1. So bringing the four solutions together, we have x1 to be equal to i, x2 to be equal to negative i, and then x3 to be equal to 1, and then x4 to be equal to negative 1. So these are the four solutions to the equation. Thank you for watching.